So uh, thanks, Mike, for joining us today. It's great to That's a pleasure. Uh, great to have you and to hear from LifePoint Land, as we know we affectionately uh, call that. So for for some of our folks in 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 our community in our church family, they'll say LifePoint Swansea. Tell tell us a little bit because it's years since uh, they say that you got ejected from Southport, but I don't believe that. <laughs> they threw me out, but I can't remember what for, Dave. <laughs> anyway, Wales took me in 24 years ago and they might have regretted it ever since, but we're having fun down here. Um, so, yeah, we have LifePoint Church, which um, is a church that was born 44 years ago by a group of five passionate followers of Jesus who were university students. And by the time I got here 24 years ago, um, it was a wonderful, wonderful band of amazing people. Um, and we, we found a building, so we now... Um, meet from the LifePoint Centre and everything we do is from that building up into the hillside and across the city. And then um, a few years ago, we we were a group of Christians in Pembrokeshire reached out to us and asked us to look after them. So uh, LifePoint Pembrokeshire is a thing. Brilliant. That's about 30 people. Um, and we uh, got some really exciting developments just happening there. I think 2021 will be their very, very, very best year. So we've got a lot of exciting things coming up That's there. Good. Um, and then in, uh, we worked in Mayhill, which was a, a residential community on the edge of um, Swansea city centre. And so LifePoint Mayhill was born. And uh, Ollie Mizzen looks after that now. It's a very exciting story. Um, there are about 30 people meeting there. And then a year ago, Kerry asked us to plant a church in the Neath Valley. So there's now LifePoint Neath, which is again about 30, 30 to 40 people from right up the Neath Valley, from which is north of Swansea. Um, so that's, yeah, so there are four church families, if you like, that make up the big family that is, is LifePoint. LifePoint land extending its reaches around <laughs> Wales. I'm loving Keeps it. Keeps me out of mischief, at least. It's exciting. Going back to that, the um, you, you, were, you were up and you were sharing with the church, weren't you, about yeah. the fact that God had opened up quite miraculously that building for you. Yeah. And... Um, and you prayed, you walked around that building. Tell us that story, Mike. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, this must be just over 10 years ago, I suppose, when um, we looked at a building that was, in fact, traditionally the synagogue. The Jewish community couldn't look after it anymore. Um, and uh, they, we wondered if we could make it our home base. Um, in order to make that possible, um, we had to do something audacious, Dave, really, which everybody told me was impossible, which was actually move in, we would own it, we would worship there, but we would make a room where the Jewish community could be on Saturdays for a five year period. And obviously everybody said, well, you're flying in the face of history because Christians and Jews don't get on. The whole city knows that Christians and Jews don't get on um, and it'll never work. There were so many reasons. There's no example in all of history or in the country of this working. Um, but the God had spoken to Liz, to my Liz, to, to uh, to say quite clearly, he'd said to us so clearly that this would be the place where he'd be, he was, Jesus was going to be worshipped. We knew 100%, but the Jewish community had a vote and they said emphatically no. Um, and But we just knew it was right. So I did that. Yeah, I just every morning for 365 days, I left my home and I walked around the walls of the building claiming it for Jesus. Literally just prayed in tongues walking past and around the building every morning for a whole year. And I knew for certain one day Jesus would be worshipped in that building. And one year later, exactly, they rang me. The Jewish community said, we voted again and we want to sell. And they sold it to us for the price of a residential house, Amazing. price of a normal domestic property. And it's, it's views over Swansea Bay. It's just magnificent views over the bay. We're and, not allowed um, to, we're not allowed to envy, but... For anybody listening to this, if you get a chance to get down to Swansea, you go and you stand looking out of the incredible vista of Swansea Bay. It, it yeah. probably, I don't know any church that has a view like that. It's, it's beautiful. On a, you look right across Mumbles Lighthouse on a clear day, you can see England, but not everybody here thinks that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's, but from it, we've been able to minister to thousands and thousands and thousands. It became, God had said to us, that whatever building he gave us, that there would be a room at the heart of it that would be dedicated to food and that we, it would be a house of food, house of bread for the city. And we probably fed, I don't know, it's difficult to know, but 
thousands and thousands and thousands of people right across the city have been fed from the building. So it really is a bit like Joseph and his warehouses, you know, where we mm. fill it with food and we just give away kindness in every way we so, can. So t t tell, us, tell us a little bit about that because it's part of your story where you've had a great impact in the community. But when you say people will be thinking thousands of people, what kind of kitchens have they got? What kind of stuff? Yeah. But, but there's, there's a whole range of things that you're doing and that you've evolved into as being a real beacon in your community uh and yeah i mean we we learned a lot from you guys actually because you told us about your um kindness nights the the vip nights and they yeah. were amazing and we wanted yeah. to start doing something for vulnerable and homeless people and uh, so we blatantly just stole your your model dave thank you um but we wanted to do some work for homeless people um we wanted to um add to food hampers a kind of uh a more of a classic kind of food bank model alongside the individual hampers that we deliver to people's homes. So, so we, I, need to to, I need to interrupt you because um, one, I remember it was the Cole clan who started the VIP nights and we definitely stole their idea and adapted <laughs> it to us. And then you did something and you adapted it and we started hearing about the amazing people at LifePoint who were doing these blessing baskets, hope, That's baskets, right, yeah. the hope ministry. So we just thought we're going to steal that. And so we Nothing wrong with a bit of stealing in the kingdom of God. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's <laughs> no copyright on great uh, spirit inspired ideas. And, and I know that we copied and and it's been an amazing blessing for hundreds and hundreds of people here. Even even we're in the planning stages now of uh, for the fire, the police, the ambulance, all of the local wards in the hospital. Uh, we're right. doing it and it started. Its genesis was uh, with LifePoint. So Amazing. I think we're allowed to steal each other's ideas. Nice that we enrich each other. Yeah. We had, I mean, Matthew Ling has a lot to answer for, really, because we we had our building bought for the price of a domestic property, and it was good. But to do everything we needed to do for homeless people, we wanted them to be able to sleep over uh, during the winter months, but also wanted to feed, wanted to do something for um, women's aid and get all the vulnerable ladies to be able to come and have meals in our property Um and that would include homeless, uh, ladies in prostitution, ladies fleeing domestic abuse. And so we had big dreams for that, but also massive space that was required for, for, for extra food distribution, et cetera. And we, um, we applied to the National Assembly, um, who you never give money to churches, basically, but we applied for over £300,000, more than we'd ever spent on buying the building. That would have been a huge grant we applied for. And they replied to us and said, no, which was fair dues. We weren't really, you know, it was an audacious request. Um, but we did it on the basis that we're trying to love our city. And in some ways, we're trying to do things that nobody else is doing. And we went up to Bible Week. And I don't know if you remember, Dave, but there was a, a Bible Week where they called up onto the stage, all of us who were elders in the churches, and they prophesied to us. And Matthew Ling prophesied that when you go back to Swansea, his prophecy was the favor of God is upon you because of what you were doing. And as a sign of that, when you go back to Swansea, the favor of man will fall upon you, will follow you. You'll, you'll experience the favor of man and it will be a sign that God has seen your heart and yeah. wants to bless you. And literally, um, I drove back on Thursday from Bible Week. So the prophecy was on a Monday. Um, I drove back on Thursday, walked into the office of the original smaller Life Point Center. And there was a letter on the desk with, with my name on it and in it was a letter from the national assembly saying we've changed our mind we'd like to give you th a third of a million pounds to do everything you asked for and it was the most like national assembly never changes their mind about anything and they never give money to churches and it was like one of those prophetically birthed miracles so a lot of the stuff we're able to do now matthew ling is to blame for really <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it was just an amazing story. example of the prophetic word birth something it's a spark in the air and it makes miracles happen yeah. so all that we've been able to do now really came out of that so we were able to 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 massively extend our facilities and it's been good god's, god's looking oh. after us uh, you've got a stunning place and a stunning people mike just mm. um covid comes along in actual fact i i think um was it only a couple of months after neath yeah Started, yeah, the there, Neath Church was uh, born, yeah. Planting, and then straight away, boom, lockdown. Yeah. Hey, by the way, you, uh, you of course, 
you, you, you finally got to our level and beyond us because we were <laughs> tier three before you. It's probably the only thing we could claim, and I'm not sure it's so good that we could claim it, but uh, but I, I think you're actually worse than us. I, I heard about the police going into somewhere in Cardiff, a church yeah. meeting, and closing down the meeting. And I thought that church yeah. meetings were still allowed, even though we're, we're, we're pressing a pause on our in-person gathering. Sure, yeah. But um, Yeah, but what happened is, I mean, right now, now, we're in the severest lockdown in the United Kingdom. It's yeah. incredible how, I mean, zero tolerance. The first bit of lockdown early in the year in Wales, they made a five-mile driving limit. So you couldn't go past five miles from your home, which considering that a lot of precious people in the Welsh villages live more than five miles from the nearest shop, so it was really draconian, you know, um, and we like we we have the beautiful Gower beaches not far from us, but the best ones are all about five point three miles from us. So for six months we couldn't go. So it was really serious. The government's approach here, they did serious lockdown. They shut down the most famous and cool bar Noah's Yard, which when we were allowed to open, they they shut them down in a night. They just arrived on the doorstep and shut them down. And they, right. You're right. They've emptied churches. Um, they've been serious. And right now, the Welsh lockdown rules are nationwide. So nothing's localised. So we've got, <laughs> I, mean, this, I shouldn't be laughing, but there are whole counties where there really isn't any COVID at all. Rural counties like Ceredigion, Pembrokeshire. I'm impressed. You know, I'm impressed. You're fully Welsh. You, know. you can say that. I'm not even going to insult those people. Seriously. To say seriously. That, so hardly anybody, you, you could walk, the streets for a month you can't find anybody with COVID in some of those rural communities but the government here have decided to do a national lockdown on everybody because they said it's fair so fair is not for me to comment on that but it means that whole counties are locked down where there's very little danger but places cities like Swansea there is danger and I'm really grateful because they're they really have done severe lockdown so I can't even meet one person outside except my wife I can't you literally hear for two weeks right now can't meet a single person inside or outside so we've been doing live church meetings for about eight weeks but they're all shut down now right and, uh, they're, they're, they're making an effort their main thing here is they believe the english are the danger so they're trying to shut out the, the english we, we were so, banned i think they've got snipers yeah. on the border stop You're right if they see an english number plate that's it exactly exactly so the greatest danger the perception is that we'll be fine if we can keep the english out so a thousand years ago, ago, I think they built Offa's Dyke, which is the Welsh version of Hadrian's Wall, and it was an, it literally was in in the in the back in in ancient history an attempt to keep the English out of Wales, and now everybody's laughing that Offa's Dyke is it needs to be rebuilt because we so so there's a real attempt to keep us safe, but what it means is very hard for us. For example, we can't do meetings now. Yeah. We can open our building for food bank. Um, one, one thing that I would say, looking back, I've learned about it all, Dave, is that if you have genuinely been loving your community and your neighbourhood and your city, if you've been doing it sincerely, we call it food, clothing and kindness, and, and we try to make it a heartbeat. And if you've been doing it, then the city will need you and they will cry out for you to stay open. But you can't make it up. You can't train for the marathon on the day of the marathon. When the day lockdown comes, you either have loved your city or haven't. And literally this happened and a bit embarrassing, but the first week of lockdown, everything was shut. The community center where we did all our Mayhill stuff was shut. Um, and um, I went up to meet a group of people outside the community center in Mayhill. Um, and I was just a representative of the church. This wasn't about me, but the, the, one of the local politicians who was the Lord Mayor previously, got out of his car, there was a group of us standing there from all different walks of life. And, and he pointed through the crowd at me and, uh, and he said, he said, whatever you do, keep that guy well. Cause if, if he goes down, we're all going down. And I was really embarrassed. I actually looked over my shoulder, <laughs> what is he talking to? And he said, you, we got to keep him well. Because, and then he said the words, he said, because life point does all the good stuff here. Really? And if he goes down, we're in trouble. And it, it's very humbling, but it definitely wasn't me because I don't do the stuff. It's behind me. There's 200 incredible people who are just, just the most amazing people of God. Just pour their lives out day after day for the city that they love, and they are they are the people of God. And the Bible says, "Out of Zion 
Perfect in Beauty, God Blazes interview. And I have to say about the beautiful people that make up Life Point Land, they are Zion and out of God's people. Perfect in Beauty, God Blazes interview. And the city needs the people of God. So they, they threw us the keys to the Mayhill Community Centre, said everybody else is locked out. The building is shut except for you. You can open it. You can, you can do food bank from it. You can do your meetings from it because we need you to be alive. And it, it, it's, it's embarrassing and funny, but it reminds me a little bit of in the book of Acts, uh, Tabitha, the character Tabitha, she dies. But she's been so kind to everybody. You know it, Dave, wouldn't it? She's made clothes for everybody and she's looked after everybody in the community. So they contact Peter and they say, Tabitha has died. You have to raise her from the dead because we need her. And actually, when Peter gets there, they're all holding up the clothing and stuff that she made for them. And they bait no pressure on Peter. They basically said, get him, get him alive. Because if he, because if she dies, we're all in trouble. And I think it's like a, an amazing picture of what we're meant to be in our neighborhoods. That if we were to die, they would send for somebody to raise us back to life because because out of Zion, perfect in beauty, God blazes into view. And, and I, I, that's how I think it's meant to be. So it's been very humbling that they have allowed us to keep being who we are. Um, I, I guess because um, a lot of food banks shut down. Yes. They couldn't staff it. But, you know, I, I am privileged to have, if you include children across LifePoint land, over 100 miles of, of Wales, about 300 people who will do anything for Jesus and just want, you used to use a phrase in Southport that I love so much. I've never forgotten it. And you used to say, demonstrate in the heart of God to our generation. And, I, and I, I've never forgotten the phrase, demonstrate the heart of God to our generation. So a little bit of Southport is inside me forever in, in that phrase. And that's, I guess, what we're trying to do, Dave. And in, trying. in real tough times, Mike, um, have, yeah. you, have you, the night shelter thing, I mean, it's coming up to, probably a difficult season for many because we know yeah. the, the lack of sunshine and bad weather and the restrictions, people's yeah. mental health, that's a big issue. But you, you've you been using your building as, as part of a, a, a collective, as yeah. the, the night shelter, haven't you? Is is that going to be feasible? How, what's going it's to difficult happen? to know what will happen this winter with yeah. COVID in mind. So the guy, there's basically seven churches at its simplest, combine every winter to be open between them every night for all the coldest months and each one becomes um, a place for dinner watch a movie have a nice night's sleep have a cooked breakfast and every night one of the seven of us is open on a rolling basis um, and there's a minibus that gets the folks who need that from venue to venue and the guy who runs all of that for Swansea Nigel is in in the church with us and uh, he's talking to me about what this winter might look like and it it's complicated because the National Assembly are having to look at the situation and it might be that we all combine as churches in one venue so that the, the, yeah. the um, it's a little bit more, more COVID safe yeah. and we're using fewer facilities. But either way, um, yeah, the folks who are homeless will be looked after this winter one way or another and by, the, by the churches together, which is cool because none of us could do it on our own. The great expression of unity. The, um, yeah. You're a big university town, Mike. The yeah, students nearly have been branded as though we, we should have issued them all with a personal bell because <laughs> they carried bubonic play. Yeah. Praise God for us in our local university, Edge Hill. Um, of course, every place has cases, but yeah, thankfully, no fatalities. But for you, how, you have such a strong student body. How's that working out? How's the church connecting with them? Or so, okay, them? yeah, they, they've come back to uni. And um, that when we for eight weeks, we could do live meetings and many of our students came to those. But we meet in an incredibly socially distanced manner. So we have a two meter measure and we measure the gap between every seat and every table. And we yeah. we have three separate meetings in the Life Point Centre, 45 minutes apart. And after each meeting, we take out all the chairs, bring in new quarantine chairs. We take out all the every single item that's on everybody's coffee table we take out and replace it three times during the morning so it's extremely complicated and we have one singer behind perfect screen just like everybody else but many of our students have come to those Dave um, they have to book in by yeah. Wednesday night they tell us if they're coming and then we have a coffee table with their name written on the coffee table we have a little bottle of hand sanitizer 
a little given envelope and chair or two chairs if it's a couple um, and um, they come in one way, leave the other, etc. So we've done, ex we have adopted extreme COVID safe measures because of the credibility of the church is at stake. And certainly in Wales, if we mess it up, they'll shut everything down. So we're uber, uber safe. But our students come and, you know, the ones who are linked with us are so respectful of COVID guidelines and safety precautions. They're incredible. In fact, they're all serving. They serve, they, they welcome, they, they just, our students, very like yours, I mean, you're having unbelievable move of God amongst your students in the church there. Mm -hmm. Nearly every time I go on social media, you, during last year, you were baptizing yet yeah. another brand new Christian. And I think across the country, we would love to see as many students born again, baptized and joining the church as you're seeing, Dave. Um, what we are blessed by is, is largely Christian students who really, really want to serve the church. So they throw themselves in heart and soul and they're doing it now properly serving. We had one volunteer came into our food bank because we're allowed to own food bank and helped us yesterday. Um, um, a student called Vicky, she helped us re completely redo our entire hope facility. So we have a very strong serving heart amongst Good us. Good on students. you, Vicky. If you're listening to this, good on you, girl. That's I know she was amazing. The, the rest of us were staff and Vicky just came and gave a whole day. Just, just to make the whole food bank area right. And, and I, you know, the general, the word on the street about students is that they come to a city to take, but ours don't. I've got to be honest. Ours come to the city to give. That's great. They just give, give and give. And we're, we're totally blessed by them, if I'm honest. And one, I mean, the, some of the testimonies. So during lockdown, Dave, obviously, we, we try to do some online meetings, which, which were fine. But every, what, what God said to me personally, was was let my people tell their stories so what i did is as you know i i took wednesday night took a few minutes and each wednesday tried to introduce one person from the church just to tell their story mm -hmm. and some of them like we we have a lady who was welsh businesswoman of the year um in the church and then we have a lady who's disney's lion king director of the touring mm -hmm. lion king show and we have someone who's a pilot and and, and not many so a lot of people i just I just let them tell their stories but there are other people who've been gloriously born again and they just told their story and we've got a student called will fantastic young man he's at covenant college now but he he was far from god um, none of us knew him he was in his room wanted to take his life um, and on the night he was going to take his life he cried out to jesus in his bedroom and jesus appeared to him in his room like a bright shining light and swept right through him and and he, his entire life was changed in one incredible night where Jesus just came and met him, you know, and, and um, everybody who knows him knows that Will's life changed in a night and he came to find church and um, was an intern in the church last year and has gone to Covenant College. When he told his story on these Wednesday night midweek messages, and he's just one of our students, but he's one a bit more like some of yours who's actually found his faith while he was at uni. He told his story, I think, at the last count, more than 4,000 people That's wonderful. watched his story, including his mother who gave her life to Jesus. So his mom is now born again because of his story. Um, and, and so what we found was um, when a student comes to Jesus, um, the, the, the impact on campus is massive. Large number of those 4,000 views of Will's story. I'm sure that the students on the university campus who knew him or heard about him, and the other thousand views were probably his mother. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. So we're all yeah, learning uh, the power in in broadcast, aren't we? We're learning. Yeah. Like I hate cameras. I hate them. Uh, vengeance. But uh, we're all having to get brave, aren't we, Dave? You and we me. I mean, I, I mean, I wish when we'd started all those weeks ago that it seems as though um, Harry and Morgan, who were just such stars, and Harry just recently takes a, a lot of the weight with us up here, but um, it seems as though they've just got to bin just with my outtakes and my mistakes. I, I want to see them because all of us, <laughs> we, must, we must have gigabytes of, of mistakes and errors. And yeah, we weren't trained for this, were we, Dave? We weren't trained for this. And, and we're, we're talking lights and cameras and, and settings, and or even, even across the church. We, I was I was interviewing a lady this morning. Uh, you know her, Maggie Sangston. She was yeah, I know Maggie. Yeah, she was sharing some of her wisdom about 
about prayer, which will be out shortly. And we were just saying, who'd have thought we'd have been doing this, but Will's testimony going out to thousands, where would that have been if, if I agree like this? And, and, and we, we're being forced to do some stuff, which we are. A lot of it will stay with us because we found you, you've Mike, maybe you unpack this a little bit. You, you talked about, haven't you? You you actually have more than four church families in Life Point land. Now, mm -hmm. you, what's evolving in this is actually you have this. There's a community fifth campus, we call it. Campus, yeah, it's online. There's campus. a fifth campus. Yeah, there's a bunch of people. So the Wednesday night messages at the very, very most in Life Point land, if you include every child and people's cats and dogs there's 300 of us and we would do a midweek message on a wednesday and every single time there'd be 800 900 a thousand people watching and um the best will in the world i don't know who they are there's just a hungry world yeah. wants to hear something that makes sense to them and um I, let me just read you this this is this is just a letter i just had recently hi my name is rebecca i i, I haven't met this person I wanted to say hi and introduce myself and say a huge thank you to everyone for LifePoint Online. Without watching your weekly meetings and Wednesday messages, I wouldn't be where I am or who I am now. I ran away from my family, my church and my God about nine or 10 years ago due to circumstances. I was full of anger. I didn't want anything to do with it. Looking back now, I can see God let me run away, but he kept me safe through everything. Now I can look back and it's funny really to see that the past couple of years, God has been closing literally every door that I was trying to open. Something inside me knew it was God, but I resisted for so long. I've been so stubborn, it took a pandemic. It took a pandemic for me to wake up until I had no choice but to let everything go. I turned up on my mum's doorstep a month ago, something that six months ago I would have been too proud or angry to do. I look back and I can see God has literally been saying, right, that's enough now, it's time to come home. Life before was so empty, had no reason or meaning. At the very beginning of lockdown, someone sent me a link to watch Swansea Life Point online. I was hooked. I looked forward to it and watched it every week. The person sent me a Bible. I had peace and actually wanted to read it every day. It's still all very new and I'm very rusty, but it's a start. Anyway, that's just a short story about why I'm here now camping out in my wonderful parents' living room until God shows me what to do next. The reason for this is email is to send my thanks and I can't wait to actually come and meet the Life Point family someday soon. I heard you're going to do an alpha online. I'd really like to do it, please. And that young lady, she, she gave me permission to say her story. Her name's Rebecca. And after 10 years away from God, she's come home to God. And I don't even know her yet. Yeah. And I think God has taken, at the very moment, Dave, when we thought our world was shrunk, God expanded it. Yeah. Because you can't lock down Jesus. Yeah. You can't lock down Jesus. I, I, I passionately believe that, that what Resurrection Sunday proves is you can't lock down Jesus. That you put him in a tomb, he'll break out of that. Roll a rock across the face of the cave, Jesus will break out of lockdown. And, and I don't mean we should break rules. I'm very respectful to the government, but I, 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 I respectfully sometimes I think Jesus is the king of rock and roll because he looked at a rock and made it roll. He, he, he broke out of a tomb. And, and I think at this moment, Dave, God is breaking us out to reach way more people than we ever would have reached in our little church buildings. I think COVID is, is, is cruel and it's a pandemic that has caused carnage and devastation. I'm praying that it will end. But God brings good out of everything mm -hmm. and, and, and out of contraction, he brings expansion. And we have found hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hungry people many of them write to me saying thank you for saying something that made sense in this crazy year in my crazy life and i just trust that um that we can dare to believe that we're braver than we think we are and whether it's looking into a camera and sharing your testimony like will did and four thousand people listen and his mother comes to jesus because he was braver than he thought he was and um, to every child of God right now saying, what is 2020 all about? I'd say you're braver than you think you are. You, you, your life might feel like it's contracted, but God's going to expand your influence. Just get brave and do something that will touch somebody's life. Because I think there is 
an anointing upon God's people to shine right now like never before. It's like there's glory in us and it's time to shine and not to hide. Um, so uh, I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited even in the middle of the severest lockdown in the United Kingdom where I can't walk out of my door and, and meet one person. But there's a world out there that I can reach and bless and touch. So um, let's let's just believe there's glory in us, Dave. It's um, it, it, you are living the words, Mike. Let your light shine before men. Yeah. When they see your good deeds. Let's do it. Praise your Father in heaven. And and what there's so much of a focus, isn't there, for all of us on what we can't do. In particular, for yeah. you guys who uh, we we have certain liberties that you don't. Sure. Have. You're definitely yeah. in worse lockdown than us, but um. But it's rather than focus on what we can't do, we focus on the things that we can, and there are opportunities exactly. there for exactly. us less to encourage. That um, let us consider how we can stir one another to yeah. faith, love, and good deeds, and that's yeah. what we can do. And, and and let me just say, you guys, you're inspiring us in your walk and in your lives because thank you, Dave. Seeing it on the ground, lives touched, and and you're doing this not to beef yourselves up in any way but i believe god's people should be because we're designed to be a light in mm. in the darkness and that's what exactly yeah. what you are but you're drawing attention to jesus at the center of all things and it's just mm. inspirational mike you do us good and your words are fantastic we're a praying church up here and we want to be able to pray for all you life point crew we uh we love you lots so so what what in particular could we be praying for you at this time especially as you're in worse restrictions than me yeah i, yes. I shouldn't be laughing because i know that this is just <laughs> and you know it's our relationship that i can say you're in, in worse it could be worse we are. Than me, but it is you we are we are we are but we're gonna get a just pray i can go and see my beaches again i'm missing the beach yeah. but for us as a church um yesterday a little group of us met um we got the life point neath church um, the valley stretches a long way. It's about 100,000 people live in Neath and the valley that goes all the way up to kind of Aberdeen. And uh, it's, it's, it's a growing group of people. They're very excited. They've got a lot of faith and vision. And what we really need is a kind of mini life point center, a facility there from which we can reach that valley. And we've received a grant, um, 75,000 pounds. And God's people here have given very generously. So we hope that we can match that. Um, so we start uh, the day after this. We're in the two week fire break lockdown that we, I've just described. But the day after that, we're going to visit some properties in the Neath Valley to see if we can find a place from which we can try to do to the Valley of Neath what we've sought to do for the city, which is just lay our lives down in food, clothing and kindness and, and love them. We, we reach in a lot of families who have children with additional needs. We've got some specialist ministry to to those families and during lockdown two of those have given their life to jesus that is um, um two parents from two separate families who've been we've been in touch with because they come to our things with children with additional needs two of them have got born again and there's a lot of those are in the valley of need um, there's a couple called todd and stephanie who lead that church and they have a dedicated ministry to families whose children have additional needs. And so we're looking for a facility from which we can bless those families in a very intentional way and also be church on a Sunday. So could you pray that God leads us to the right place, that he opens windows in heaven because we probably need twice as much money as we currently have in order to purchase or build anything up there. So pray for Life Point Need for facility and for our two new elders. Last week, Kerry came to the church and he set into eldership Ollie Mizzen and Simon Powell. So bless them. They have to work with me now every day and they need the grace of God to do that. So can you pray for Simon and Ollie? Because they are brand new elders in the church. That's, Thank you. That, that, that is great. And, and on the building side of things, um, we know that commercial properties are there and that's what will happen in the sadness that somebody has lost the business. Yeah. God's hand is shaping and moving to create the space for you guys to find that you'll stand within that building yeah. and you look and come on will have been that moment in time where just now the best price for you that yeah I see that word I love, I love the fact that you need double the money but you could get half the price you're right and i received that prophetic word dave oh. and i'll i'll keep you updated with how it goes because god works all things for good yes and, uh, we'll, we'll we'll keep talking to you mike it's just been inspirational 
Um, Thank you. You always are. I love you loads. We miss you. And uh, we're glad we managed to sneak in a little trip down to uh, wonderful Wales. When it was allowed. With Swansea in August. It's a good job because it when, might not happen when, now until... Yeah, when it's legal again, come and see us again, Dave. Lovely to talk to you, mate. Uh, great speaking to you, Mike. Our love to all the beautiful people in the community church, Southport and Ormskirk. Liz and I and the whole church here, we send you our love. We love you guys. Be okay. Back at you. You know that. 